All righty, here we go. We are being taped. Okay. Good evening, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've had a day. Um, nothing is as easy as it seems in the midst of a pandemic. So let me see if I can slideshow from beginning and then um, share my screen and Okay, can you guys see my application week three? Yeah, we can. Okay, great. Yeah, I uh, spent a good portion of my free time today trying to uh, trying to get a COVID um, test. And it turns out the test that the Pikes Peak Community College uses is the same test as my home test, which yielded the same result uh, negative. Um, so I think I have to go get a PCR test tomorrow at my doctor. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm, I'm still negative. Um, you know, it would be ironic that I contracted COVID from the person, you know, <laughs> before or after I was in line. So, you know, getting a test. So anyway, that would just be the way things work. But um, anyway, Will, uh, I think I have some information on where we're going and I'll share it in just a second. Um, I was planning on getting all the grades in. I got a couple papers done, but I'm not finished. So I will have them done by tomorrow, um, none of the none of the grades on this affect your assignment, except when they start going into the master assignment, and it would be nice to correct them um, and put them in um, as you get them back. The I've had a few students who tried to make all the corrections in the last week for you know five or six different assignments, and it got kind of tangled up. And so um, I want to make it my goal to get this stuff to you by Wednesday, Thursday at the very latest so that when we have class, um, you know, if you have questions or, or there seems to be a particular issue that affects a number of, of the papers, I can um, address it so that we don't get, um, you know, um, behind the eight ball in terms of the delivery on this stuff. I, I'm going to walk through the entire assignment. I've gotten a couple of questions, you know, um, are we doing this for something else? Is there a big picture here? And so we'll, we'll walk through what I call the mega assignment or it's a uh, portfolio assignment, but it has a uh, incremental additive kind of incremental do something each week um, most of the time that plugs in to a template. And so we'll, we'll actually walk through this and hopefully I won't cause uh, further confusion, but uh, clarify some things. Um, I, I do wanna apologize for the COVID issues. I know we've gone back and forth. Um, they are not your fault. Um, and I do have, straight from Dean Wilson, um, what the what the schedule is for the next, for the rest of the term, okay? Um, weeks four and five, there's some weirdness in the schedule. We will be asynchronously online, okay? In other words, no Zoom meetings, you work the discussion questions, et cetera. Um, Week six, we meet on campus. Week seven, we're async. Eight on campus, nine async, 10 on campus. I think week 10 is on campus. Um, 
but I, I have to check and double check. I, I've heard that the last week is kind of an option. So anyway, um, we do have two more weeks for me to get <laughs> one more positive, uh, oh no, one more negative test on, uh, and, and all of you who have aspirations of coming to the class, um, please plan it on um, week six, which is, oh, uh, that is the week of February 6th uh, through the 12th. Okay, so second week of February. Hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll have things in, uh, in better order then. Okay. A any questions on this? I'm, I'm sorry that I know I've communicated some incorrect information. I thought we were going to be online synchronous um, for all of January and that got changed. And so um, anyway, uh, some of you were waving your hands said, saying, Professor Bauer, are you smoking something or is there something wrong with you and some of you are very tender trying to tell me I didn't know what I was talking about and uh, anyway I apologize if I proceeded as if this was the status I have an email saying it is but uh, apparently it's not so anyway you, you don't argue with my father always said you don't argue with gravity unless you're in space and so uh I'm not going to argue with the, the the real forces of physics in this class, and we'll just we'll just go from there. All right. Um, any questions on our schedule? So, just want to clarify: this will be the last Zoom meeting based on this, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just I'll I'll send two copies out if you want. You know, um, I, I I would not bet the mortgage on it <laughs> right <laughs> i would bet the mortgage on us living through the weekend but but anyway um yeah i'm uh yeah i'm it's kind of like betting on any of the nfl games uh coming up um there's a lot of parody in this league and uh it's just uh, i just don't see anybody you know the clear choice here but anyway now that Denver's been eliminated. <laughs> so anyway, all right. You got to bet the Chiefs. I said that. Yeah, the Chiefs look good, but God, oh. Buffalo looks good. Tennessee. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go. Yeah, yeah. My wife is from Wisconsin, and uh, all of her family's from Mazani. And if from I was Mazzini? expressing, I if I was expressing any doubts in them. My uh, my my mother, my late mother-in-law, would come and haunt our house forever. So, <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we we love. Um, I started loving Bart Starr. That's how old I am. So anyway, yeah, yeah. he was a great quarterback. I don't know about the coach. So anyway, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. There have been a whole lot of people who have spent decades betting against Tom Brady. So, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot. All I know is I'm a Washington football fan. I grew up in the area. The Washington Commanders, Commandos, Red, Red Hogs. I mean, they got a bunch of names. They're going to have the great reveal next week. I just think it's stupid. They need to get rid of their owner and get a good team. That's, you know, but anyway, um, so I don't really, I tell people I, I don't cheer for the NFL. I, I root for the Washington football club. So they're not, they're not even a good, they're not even in the SEC. So anyway, all right. So uh, sorry, I got off on that, but um, yeah, I, I bet on any of those teams would be, um, uh, probably better than uh assuming zoom but um worse comes to worse i can't get on campus or, or whatever or you can't get on campus one of the things that i did pick up is um while there is not a lot of mercy shown toward um adjunct instructors there's an awful lot of mercy shown toward 
students who are in remote conditions. I guess I should say that they've been pretty good with me and working around, you know, snafus and things like that. But um, if you find yourself off campus for, you know, um, I think just about any reason, especially if you feel symptomatic, we will spin something up. Uh, even if, you know, if we're meeting on campus, we'll spin up a Zoom session. So, um, but, you know, given the fact that there are one, two, three, four more classes that are async online, you know, we drive our own stuff. So um, hopefully that will, that will help. Any other, any other questions on that? Clear as mud, right? Yeah, just uh, maybe to clarify, by the way, we're really glad to see you back. Uh, I hope the COVID didn't have uh, too much effect in you, in you and your family. Oh, no, I, I didn't have COVID. I had oh. COVID paperwork. Oh. Okay, which is almost as deadly as COVID. <laughs> no, I, I mean I just I, I haven't had it and I really don't want it. And I hope so, yeah. I've got two two uh vaccines and a booster and they wanted my flu shots. They I mean, gosh, this was yeah, yeah. so I, I I got all that stuff done and I've had it already. Um but now they wanted um the, the one thing that I got them to do is you know, anytime somebody asks you something medical, it, it, the answer is always a long story. So you should never, never ask a question about somebody's <laughs> medical stuff. But, but anyway, they were telling me I had to come up to DU to get my COVID tests and then sit there and wait. And, and, and then they said it was a few days. And I said, you know, I just really don't want to drive an hour and a half uh, there, yeah. uh, there, and an hour and a half back. Can I do this somewhere else? And they, they said, yeah, yeah, we'll let you do that. So that's what, that's what really helped. And that's, that's why we're making some progress. So anyway, All right. All right. yeah. So that's if you good. don't feel well, please don't come to campus and kill me. All right. I'd be, my, my lawyers will find you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know what's that frank azar you know the strong arm <laughs> we we will find you all right no i'm just i'm just I, you got to keep your sense of humor and miss all this crap or yeah. just a, it'll make you mental but um anyway any anything else on this yeah just one point on the schedule because it kind of confused me last week uh, on the module it said the, uh, the class of week two was asynchronously so I didn't imagine that there was going to be a Zoom meeting, even though I was sitting the whole, on my PC the whole time. So that's yeah, and, and I think I, I owe you guys an apology because I thought because of COVID, we were moving to everything Zoom and I was mistaken. Um, I got a letter saying that, but I did not read the email that came afterwards saying, nope, we're going, we're rotating back and forth. So yeah just you got one extra zoom meeting then you bargained for so um you know i'll, I'll have the university bill you or something but uh <laughs> for pain and suffering <laughs> all right uh <laughs> any more ways i can <laughs> i can muddle this thing up all right let's uh let's drive on um we're going to talk about um, the comprehensive procurement plan, which is this um, overall mega assignment that finishes up in on week 10. And there are a couple of these, maybe you've had these kinds of assignments before. I, we, we just got finished um, redesigning the enterprise architecture class. And that's a case study that has six incremental pieces. Um, those are time bound and, and very, you know, waterfall sequenced kind of thing. Whereas this one is piece parts um, on an assembly line. And when we're done, we have a, we, we have the coal car, but you know, the, the motor comes, you know, step three and the tires come step eight, you know, whatever. It's not always clear that things are, that things start with 
page one and end in page 12, all right? And, and that's why I did a little bit of a diagram to kind of help you understand because you, you'll get whipsawed back and forth and back and forth. And you're like, where the hell is this going? And hopefully um, it, was, it was a good question that I got from one of you guys um, a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, you know, professor, can you explain this? Because it looks like we're, you know, going back and forth here. So good question. And um, hopefully we'll get clarity moving on. Okay, this is, by the way, um, we're going to look at agile and traditional um, um, ex extreme programming and um, is sometimes people say EP is a different kind. My sense is that it's traditional waterfall and I've run a, a ton of these and then everything else is a um, is a subset or derivative of the agile manifesto uh, which hit um, the latter part of last century uh, in terms of programming well I want to stop and just kind of talk about that a little bit and then we'll talk about the single assignment for this week the communications plan which will definitely be folded into the template and uh, we'll talk about all those things but first let me just talk a little bit about agile and waterfall um uh what am i doing here oh i'm going the wrong way here we go that's agile all right um there is a in 2001 um, probably about 10 or 15 programmers, pretty experienced folks, um, were, were looking at the traditional methods of software development um, that were already getting pretty slowed down by process. Uh, and there was a, a movement, a lot of independent programmers, but some folks from, you know, from uh, from some of the database folks from Microsoft from from others said, you know, we got to do this better. And they made a, uh, a statement that I think it bears if you have if you've never heard the manifesto, it's not like some communist thing or whatever, it just says um, individuals and interactions over process and tools. And if you've ever built code, um, the traditional way you find out that the most of the arguments are over process and tools and not how do we work this out and work it together. Um, that working software or code, the, the shorthand of this is code over docs, um, that people could write lots of documentation, but the actual, you know, um, compiled code um, ran weeks, months, years behind. And so you had a lot of non-coders writing stuff that never made sense when you actually looked at the software. And so the alignment was, all right, let's not write any documentation until we have working code. And then finally, somebody said, you know what, code rules and you guys play catch up with what we write because the other way of doing it is crazy. All right, and uh, having worked in, I don't know, probably 40 open source uh, uh, software defined networking projects from drivers to full stacks of, of software and, and whatever, um, it's real easy for managers and coordinators and how are we feeling? Can I get you coffee, people, and whatever, to inject so much noise? And sometimes their, you know, sometimes their intentions are good, but code rules, you know, and in an open source um, project, commits rule. In other words, people who are committing and uploading and, you know, compiling and doing the things of building code are the ones who get to decide. It's not some management person and, and, you know, and these are, you know, people on the projects I worked on were 
from Google and Alibaba and Huawei and British Telecom and Deutsche Telecom and SAP and Microsoft. And, you know, and so it's a lot of egos there, but some people talked and some people wrote code. And this is something that if you've ever worked on a big project, you can get overwhelmed with just noise. So customer collaboration, you know, in other words, what's the voice of the customer? What are the customer use cases? And what does the customer want when you show he or she that snippet or that module or whatever it is in the code set as it gets built? Instead of worrying about the contract and, you know, the party of the first part is going to reimburse the second part for the rubber bands used. To, you know, in other words, let's focus on the real important things. Um, being nimble and responding to change. Change happens just like other things that happen, like skatos in, in the Greek language, right? Um, Instead of finding the, you know, the divinely inspired master plan, you know, the Normandy landings are going to go, you know, uh, I think it was uh, Pershing, the American general in World War I, who said no plan lasts 15 minutes into the battle. Um, in other words, you, know, you can spend all, you, all your time laying out this great work process and, you know, work breakdown schedule and time it all out and have it all um, just in time for this and that and this and that, but stuff happens. And so being nimble and responsive to trust or to, uh, to change and trusting people um, to work through those bumps is, is more important then, hey, we're exactly one day ahead, take the day off, or we're exactly five days behind, we got to fire somebody, or, you know, the, those kind of stupid management, upper management things that, um, that really slow down. So, so it doesn't say the things on the right aren't important, processes, tools, documentation, contracts, plans, etc. The stuff on the left, the stuff that I have bolded here is more important. Um, I say all that because people use the term agile in some really funky ways. You know, it's like an adjective. Ah, we're an agile company. What do you guys do? Push-ups in the morning or, you know, I mean, that, that, it, it doesn't mean what the manifesto envisioned. It's just everybody's agile. So we need to be agile too. So doesn't really mean that we compile software or or do procurement differently, but we use the word agile to make people think that we're really, you know, it's kind of like digital transformation. It's just a buzzword sometimes. And, you know, the proof is in the code. The proof is in how technology changes procurement. How many people see what has been a black box for a very long time and what kind of insight they have. So, that's the manifesto. So now you got a copy of it. A lot of people have heard about the software, uh, the agile software manifesto, but um, that's really what it is. There's a bunch of principles and I, I'm not going to go through them all, but satisfying the customer, change requirements, you know, um, change requirements are good because sooner or later you're going to have to deal with them. Okay. And the, the more you harness the customer's desires, the better the code's going to be, even if you have to recompile your precious code. That's why you compile often. You know, that's one of the main, you know, you deliver working software point three frequently. Um, some, some go a couple of weeks, some compile weekly. Okay. The, the, the shorter the scale, the less lag between when the code's written, when it's compiled, and when it's tested. You know, you want those activities happening um, very close to each other. So you don't get that lag where if you have something in a module that is going to create the conditions for next steps um, and that's wrong, yeah, you got to go all the way back. All right. So, um, 
there are 12 of them, you know, and, and a lot of things are good design, communication, sustainable development, constant pace indefinitely instead of, you know, the magic, I don't know if you ever had that that phrase, the magic weekend, you know, in other words, we're coming in Saturday morning, I'll buy donuts, and you guys are going to code the hell out of the next two days, and we'll bring everything back. And, you know, that might work for something that's really extraordinary. But you can't go 80 hours a week. Uh, you know, for more than a couple weeks without it really showing in morale, especially in COVID now, you, you know, you've got people with families, you got so much going on. So self-organizing teams, not a top-down affair um, and lots of communication. So that's the whole thing. So agile methodologies in procurement, agile met methodologies in software development, agile project management. I said earlier, agile is not an adjective or marketing, okay? It is an iterative and incremental method of management. And it is focusing on a rapid, rapid delivery of business value. There's a bunch of different methodologies. Have any of you ever been a a part of a of an agile anything in term that was really an agile process or or development in your organizations um <clears throat> right now we have a project called denver terminal or basically replacing wire um on, a, on transmission lines and you know as you know we, we have a plan set up but as as the project's going those plans change so much due to you know permits that we have you know those permits um they say you can only work at a certain time so then you got to change what time your crews work according to those permits um so you can't always you know stick to the schedule you originally had um stuff right now we're having with um supply chain issues we're not getting our dampeners yeah. for our stuff quick enough so now we got to change you know our time frame based on that and and what work we can do because we're not getting equipment fast enough so yeah so it's not quite a waterfall you know, we do this, then we do this, then we do this, because thing one is going to be late. So what can we do with thing two? Or can we get the permits for thing three while we're waiting for thing one? And and so there's a lot more latency and, and having to deal with um, uncertainty. But, but has anyone said, okay, we're going to do scrum, or we're going to do uh, a lean process where we're going to have um, you know, daily meetings, we're going to have a sprint for this particular thing because we only have two more weeks on the permit. So we're going to put all our focus on on this area of, of the uh, of Denver to to really make sure that we get this down. Has, has it changed um, the way you guys work together, you know, other than just the the inputs being uh, more uncertain? Um, yeah. Uh... I mean, so far on the Denver Terminal project, I've only been on it for about three weeks now, um, but and and they've stuck to a pretty solid schedule as far as meetings and stuff go. Um, I'd say it changes as far as who's involved on in those meetings a lot, depending yeah. on where we are, like what city inspectors we got to talk to, uh, you know, what um, construction or subcontractor we got to talk to for that segment. So that, that's some stuff that changes a lot. Yeah. You still, uh, you still have to get um, get those permit guys a bottle of scotch in their uh, in the back of their car um, at the end of the day, or is it a lot? Is it a lot easier to get the permits now? Uh, no, permits are still a huge issue, especially uh, with COVID. They don't yeah, have don't, enough. Don't tell me cost. what you have to do because I want to. I don't want to have to testify, but uh, I was I was working a project where the fire marshal. Um, I was told by, you know, guy who'd been in the company for 20 years and I was like, you know, 28, you know, and I was the guy in charge who didn't know anything. And uh, the guy said, look, this guy likes Jack Daniels and just leave a, a fifth in the back of his car, the, the 
the car will be open, just leave. And, and you know, I, I said, a, I made a comment to the CFO as I was running out. I said, I got to go to the liquor store. And he said, no, you got to be on the site. He said, no, I got to go. Well, what the hell are you? I, said, I got to get a bottle for the, the, the fire marshal. And this guy was a new guy. He's, you know, Mr. Clean. And he's, no way we're going to do that. We will not bribe. We will not. Uh, I said, I think this is just a gift between friends, you know, and it will smooth the way. And, you know, no one, you know, and he, he said, I, I will fire you if you put that bottle. And um, so I didn't. Yeah. We had more permit shit for like six months. This guy killed us for a bottle of Jack Daniels. I mean, I'm sorry, you, you don't have this in triplicate. I'm sorry, you don't. I mean, and he'd smile because he knew uh, exactly what he was doing. And I went to the CEO and said, you know what? Next time somebody needs a bottle of scotch, you'll take them out to dinner. What's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so next time somebody needs a bottle of scotch, you can fire me. I'm going to give it to the guy. So <laughs> anyway, so, well, good luck with uh, with those processes. Sometimes they can be killer. Um, there are uh, some specific methodologies. Scrum, probably one of the earlier forms of agile, XP, extreme programming kanban is another one crystal I, I haven't really done a whole lot with that um lean software development people are trying to make that into its own category i think it's more of an agile offshoot um and i, I left some information here just for uh for you guys if you want to read up on this here's scrum this is the framework it gives you, it's supposed to be 10 or, or fewer members, so it's not a huge thing. Um, you have daily progress meetings. Sometimes they're stand-up meetings, 15 minutes or less. You know, the term came from rugby, um, you know, and you have these, you know, okay, for the next three weeks, we're going to work to get all the printer drivers done or all the storage and compute you know, modules written or whatever it is in the code. And so you'll go that way. Um, and, you know, it's lightweight, it's iterative, it's, it's customer facing in the sense that they're brought in to validate the requirements. Um, the, the phrase, the second bullet here called requirements volatility um, is actually what you want. Um, the, the idea that you're going to build code for eight months and none of the requirements are going to change is just illogical. So you, you, you react, you fix, you move on, you communicate. Everyone is together or virtually together and works together and don't, you know, they don't wander off on other projects. They're really dedicated to that particular one, or they have several different you know, scrum teams that they're on. Um, the other one is is uh, extreme programming, which is kind of similar, except they, you know, you might um, break it down into groups of two or three programmers working on one thing, frequent with releases, like all agile, you know, compile regularly, code review regularly, unit testing of code, um, not getting ahead and programming stuff, you know, let's make sure that we got the startup files right and the install goes well. No, 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 you, that doesn't, you don't do that until you've already compiled and you see what big tarball you have to, you know, to, to use in the install. So these are the things that it's traditional software engineering taken to an extreme focus. That's hence the term extreme programming. All right, so key ideas are, you know, they use this stuff in Project Mercury. You know, the first set of the the lunar the three lunar rocket projects in the early 60s. So it wasn't like it was, you know, something that just got, you know, um, 
develop, but they just said, okay, let's intentionally do this and make it, you know, you know, be, be relentless in trying to keep it, you know, close to the, uh, close to the projects and close to the code. All right. Um, yeah, this is from the, uh, um, uh, the assignment in, in uh, uh, this week's readings. Future view of Agile is still being developed. Um, and in terms of the Nicoletti book is really, what is it, chapter three is really good in terms of trying to envision what, you know, um, small, nimble team skating to the puck uh, together would work on, focusing on the, the customers, the needs, the key attributes in terms of, this would be in terms of, uh, you know, product development. Um, Nicoletti is more focused on, uh, on procurement, but um, this is the future. And the idea that iterative waterfall let's do this then we'll do this then we'll do this at the end of the month we'll com we'll compile um you know kind of the pmi project view of things is really changing and you know the point here is to say it's affecting the procurement side of things i still think that covid has you know has really punched you know <laughs> I, I guess this is sports night. There's no Thursday night football, but um, I think it was Mike Tyson who said, everybody's got a plan till the bell rings and somebody comes over and punches you in the face. And, um, you know, I, I, I look at, at, you know, waterfall, uh, software deve development as being a very trustworthy and very consistent expectational kind of thing. But the pace in which code has to move today is no longer putting up with those delivery times. And so agile methodologies, it's not a question of if, it's how your organization is going to be modified by them. And, um, you know, Waterfall is a project you can see, uh, the process you can see, the progress flowing. It's sequential. Um, agile is a lot less organized from an iterative one, two, three, four, five, but the pieces come together and um, it's very iterative. Sure. You, you can change without upsetting the apple cart because there is no apple cart. The apple cart is not put together until the last, you know, compile of the software. So you're delivering business value early not putting all this risk at the very end of a project. Government projects are famous for having these huge Gantt charts and people working, you know, three weeks just to get all the paperwork out. And like, when do we really start building this, you know? Um, and it's behind before it even has the kickoff meeting. So um, this is changing just about every aspect of operations and product management and development. Um, in the organization, um, you know, it's a flatter environment. You don't have to go three levels up. It's no longer the big WBS that you learned in, you know, in in um, you know the the PMI PMP kind of stuff. Um, and and here's just proof of how things have changed. Half of the content. In the PMP, this is this is from the Project Management Institute. Those of you that have done projects have probably gotten your project management professional, your PMP cert. What is quickly taking the place of PMP, it's not gonna happen this year, but in two years it'll be there, is the, the one that I've highlighted further down in the uh, menu on the left here, PMI Agile Certified Practitioner. About one third of the content, even in the new um, uh, PMBOK 7 of Project Management Professional is Agile uh, terminology and actions and activities. So you gotta know Agile to do well 
in uh, even in the PMI, but uh, or the PMP, but um, you're going to get more people wanting to get an agile certification. There's a couple of other organizations that have agile, particularly for code. There's a group up in Boulder that probably has, I forget their name, but they probably have the best scrum master, I think it is, um, the best credentials because it's it's code people talking about code. These are like project, you know, project people talking about all the above and not really, you know, you really don't have experienced code people um, developing this certain things like that. So anyway, but these are the things uh, people are going agile on. And um, just to keep that in mind. All right. I have any a question before we go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Let's, let's stop here because we're going to move on to the major assignment now. So, yeah, I don't have my PMP yet, but that's kind of like what I'm working toward. Um, but I don't work in like computer engineering or systems admin or anything of that nature where agile usually, you know, fits in. Right. So are they, are they starting to, <clears throat> cause I mean, like kind of like all the discussion that you had leading up to like right now, where you said that it's kind of leaning that way, everything kind of fits in with coding and software development. None of that seems to be written in a way to, to where you can put in like an operations. Right. So like, I'm on the I'm on the end of like receiving that delivery and like let's say somebody wrote new code and delivered this new capability. Uh, I'm in the office where we put it to use. But yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna all right. We got the new upgrade to SQL, so that allows us to do this. From now on, we're gonna do the reporting to all the departments on the schedule and things like that. So it's not it's not a, a pure agile kind of process and to the extent that it's not code then i would say that the pmp is probably um the better credential to shoot for but here's the deal the pmp is changing right it used to be that they were like we don't need no stinking agile um yeah, they, didn't, they never said that but it was like oh agile's over here and iterative you know waterfall kind of operations is over here and most projects were you know the standard traditional you know um work you know work breakdown structure and you know meetings and you know the whole the whole bit and gantt and pert and all, all that um that's changing the new pembok 7 which is the new um um uh, the book of knowledge for that includes a lot of other things like communication and leadership and mm -hmm. agile characteristics for leadership, even if, even if it's not agile, you know, big a agile right. um, code compilation or things like that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the buzzwords, like when we read, when I was reading through the text for this week, I mean, a lot of them you can stick in there and make them fit to be like, like you said, being um, like less layers, you know, and more visibility. That still that can still fit in like a waterfall model. You just, you know, you change how communication works or you change like management styles and strategic planning and stuff like that. Yeah, you you devolve authority to make changes. You may not you may not be able to, you know, devolve responsibility to the highest stakeholders but you're you're getting decisions at one level up or two levels up based on the spend and the budget and all the other stuff in and you get decisions in hours instead of days and so it's it's a lot more nimble it's right. agile with a small a mm -hmm. and truth be told it's it's you know um Traditional waterfall projects and agile, the the melding of that is extreme programming. In, in other words, we're going to try to make the best pro the best project management processes, and we're going to flatten them, and we're going to you know make them more nimble, and we're going to you know we're we're not going to go crazy. We're going to have steady output. We're going to test 
if it's product management or, or if it's, you know, some, you know, we're going to test regularly. We're not going to wait to the end of the month, you know, those sorts of things. None of that needs a scrum master to run, but it does mean somebody who will take a nimble team, um, meet quickly and, and move on. You know, the standing meetings are, I was in one where no, no coffee, no cigarettes, no reading material, no cell phones. Um, and you know, you put your cell phone in the basket, walk it in. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, now you spent 10 minutes in there and then you got to work. So, it, you know, that, that, I think that's the, some of that is bleeding into the PMP, um, you know, um, you know, progression that all of us have kind of cut our teeth on. So, but, you know, and then, and then you got people who just agile is a marketing term, as I said before, just we're agile, you know, well, you know, so what, you know, what, what's different about your code or, or your processes or, or things like that. When you're agile, your supply chain has more visibility into your needs and vice versa. You know, you've got more distribution distribution there now who knows what COVID is going to do to that probably if it works at all it will be even better insight because of uncertainty um, I don't think everyone's going to move their manufacturing to you know the open field you know a couple miles down the interstate or something like that it's we're still de dealing in a global work you know in a global workforce and a global supply chain and I, I don't see it going away even with uh even with COVID. So in different government administrations and it's so I think we'll we'll take some, you know, try to mitigate some risk in some of these areas. So anyway. All right. So other other questions on this part. All right. Let's let's spend about 20 minutes walking through the project and then it will be yours. Um, all right, um, week three, we are going to, we're, we're, you know, we discussed agile, lean tradition, traditional hybrid, you know, co procurement project planning and is also, was also a part of your readings and whatever. We are starting a procurement plan. Actually, we 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 kind of introduced it last week without knowing the big picture, and that's what I want to do tonight. There are five big categories in any major procurement plan, and some of this resembles, you know, your your typical project stuff. So those of you who have had any of the pro project. Um, management courses at, at DU or have sat for the, um, the PMP or, or trained for it. This will, some of this will be similar. Project charter and, and vision, market research and, wait for it, voice of the customer, procurement approach. How are we going to you know, select? How are we going to uh, communicate who, where are the stakeholders? Some of these are different terms, but the concepts are similar. Performance, service standards, you know, we require X percent, you know, failure rate on parts that are shipped to us, dot 005 or dot, you know, or five nines uptime on these things or, you know, whatever your, you know, um, reliability standards are. And then how do we approach the contracts? And we'll we'll talk about the RFPs and RFQs and all that stuff in there. What's interesting is they're sequenced in some unique ways. So, all right. So the there is a word template. By the way, it it exists on five or six different weeks worth of assignments. And I did check; it's the same document, so it doesn't doesn't change or move anything around, which is good. Um, and you're going to do all five of these eventually. And then week 10 is you put all this together in an executive presentation 
with PowerPoint and a brief, you know, I wouldn't go more than 10 minutes um, overview for the for the for the project for whoever you want to propose this to. Is it the C-suite? Is it the product um, division? Is it end users who are going to adopt this? And, you know, let's tell you about how we are going to manufacture, you know, uh, COVID protective masks. And this is how we're going to get, you know, N95s to, you know, 100 million people a day, you know, uh, on a global process and et cetera, something like that. Now, that's the overall plan when you look at it from week 10. We are now in week three. So let's sequence this. Week two, we did a voice of the customer. We take that as part one in this Word template on page four, market research and voice of the customer. See the left-hand table? All right. Week two is what we're doing this week, procurement approach and comms. That's the Word document five through eight. So you're, you're, you're doing, you know, section two and now section three. Wait a minute. Where's section one? We're going to get back to that. Um, week four is sustainability, which is not going to be talked about all that much. But week five is the framework for supplier selection criteria, okay, which is in um, the Word doc page six, which is in the section, uh, section three. All right, so you're, you're getting into a segment of a section. Week six is the project charter and product vision. So now we're going back to pages one through three, section one, All right? The reason we're doing this is that toward the end, you will have more to write about and more information about your own project um, because this is, it's not something coming up from the bowels of your company where you have all this information and you're putting it all together you're in some, in some case doing something, it's a bit artificial. So the idea will be, okay, let's take the parts that really depend on earlier information and let's put them toward the end, all right? Um, week seven is part two of market research and voice of the customer. So it'll be a little different and it'll be added on, you know, the Word doc on page four, but it's in section two, but it's the second part of section two. All right, have I, <laughs> I hope I haven't lost you already. Week eight is supplier selection approach and contract approach. So this is page five through eight, okay? Um, and 10, actually, and, and 10 through 12 on the contract management side of things. Nine is performance and service standards approach. Uh, Word doc page nine. And then, of course, as I mentioned, week 10 is you complete the final contract management, week 10, which you need to wait till the end to do that. That's just a few, you know, like like a half a page or so. Um, then you do the exit. Th then basically you'll have pages one through 12. You'll probably have more because you're going to write you know, a few paragraphs instead of, you know, just one place on the, on the template, you know, that, you know, just get a, a few sentences in. So you'll have more pages in this and you'll complete, you'll complete the, the Word document template. And then you'll say, okay, you know, there's probably five major parts of this. You know what? A great PowerPoint would probably focus on what are we doing? And then these five sections and why it's important. And, you know, executive presentation, you know. Uh, and then video, uh, ag again, don't worry about, you know, if you got a webcam, you, you, you're a video producer. So you can have yourself inset in the slide if you want, you know, a little window of you talking through the slides or just 
you know, show the slides like I'm doing and, and talk through them and then record the whole thing. So again, no more than, you know, if, if a slide is, you know, should be around 30 seconds, I, I wouldn't go more than seven or eight slides. You know, you want to get out of there in seven or eight minutes. Um, this is executive level. You're not going to throw 50 slides on them and, you know, like I'm doing to you right now. Okay. Um, and, you know, so that's hopefully the scope and sequence of this is a little bit clearer because you look on the left at what you're going to finish with. But if you look from week two to week 10, it, it's kind of work on this part and then work in the basement, then work up in the attic and then work in the living room. And then, you know, the house will eventually come together, but it's not going to be, we start, in the, we start in the basement and we go all the way up to the, to the roof. Um, I, I know I've, I've talked generally about this. Uh, any, any questions at this point? As you know, I, David here always with the questions. Sorry. No, no, no problem at all, David. Go ahead. <laughs> I just like clarity. I apologize. Um, no, no apologies needed. So uh, from what I've read and the impression I'm getting, as long as um, we're meeting kind of like the intent and, and the content in those sections, we don't have to stick to like precisely what's in there as long as it's kind of meets the same flow. Is that right? Yeah. And in, in fact, I'm, I've got a slide coming up that will talk oh, to that. Um, I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're 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 a very wise man you've anticipated where the puck is going and you're skating to it so no no problem at all um the the idea is we need to make it realistic for our industry for what we're talking about you know we may not be doing things with a particular methodology our our racky chart may be different um and this is not a real project, okay? We're, we're, in a sense, you know, we're gonna list some stakeholders, you know, and if the guy, you know, um, if, if the CEO is Lewis Tully, uh, you know, I, I don't care, you know? You know who Lewis, Tull Lewis Tully is, right? Nobody? Man, I've stumped the stars here. Lewis Tully was the accountant uh, played by Rick Moranis in the first Ghostbusters movie. W that was probably made before any of you were born. In in the I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> That's the best character in the movie. It really is. He really is. Um, I use Lewis Tully as my fake name. My, I have Lewis Tully at um, Microsoft. Um, or at outlook.com all right it's the name i use whenever i want to yeah i don't know if you remember seinfeld when uh george used a fake name for uh art vandalay for he was an architect and he had this whole lying spiel and i just said you know i may need a fake name and in the world online when you want to make a complaint and not see it in, in, in and not see it in linkedin um you know, uh, I, I let Lewis Tully do my talking for me. So, so anyway, uh, say all that to say, you can make up your own names and your own people and et cetera. Um, the, the idea being a, you may not want to, you know, have Michael Dell and, and, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the Microsoft, um, leadership team mentioned in this, if you work for Microsoft and maybe taking, you know, liberties with some of your boss's identities and certainly their email addresses and contact info. Um, so yeah, this is, yeah, this is part of it. Um, it's really important in this kind of assignment to focus only on that week's assignment. In other words, don't stray in terms of the content. Focus like a robot, like a laser beam on delivering that section of the template. You save it, date it, and then next week you're gonna work on something else, keeping that same focus. You've moved on, don't bring in the comms plan or refer to it 
when you're doing something else. Wait till you do the comps plan. All right. Um, you know, make sure, you know, get your style and format. You call, you know, um, Chicago manual style down. Save your versions each week. Okay. Um, week three, da 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 da, whatever. Week four, you know, we'll have the week four stuff, you know, added to the week three and then five and then seven, et cetera. Um, there are a few holes that you need to just make up stuff for illustration purposes. You know, what, what's the code name of the project or what's the, or they don't apply. There'll be some things that pick one of these and you go from there, all right? The, the other thing that I wanted to add is there are a couple, like I, one of the weeks you don't have an assignment in here on sustainability, but you still have an assignment. So, you know, just because it's not in the word template doesn't mean you don't have responsibility for getting something delivered. So sometimes it'll say, do all this work and then submit a one page word summary. You know, so just carefully read the assignments. We're gonna go week by week, but this is, you know, big picture, you know, where the, the other stuff is going. I will make it my aim to grade your papers by Wednesday so you can have them done. You know, you can have the next part done by Sunday night. Now, you don't have to start, you know, you don't have to start working on, you know, Thursday after you get your paper back. Um, you can start laying out on a new document or your copy that you submitted to me. Um, when you get my graded section back, make the fixes there's typos if there's some format thing or you need to do something else or whatever fix that and then when you submit the next week's paper you'll have all the corrections from the last assignment plus your new stuff and this is where you got to be agile okay <laughs> repair your errors weekly okay um, the reason being is there's a shelf life on remembering what you were supposed to do and have. And if I say you forgot this statement, you may not remember what that is on week nine or week 10. Um, and you're going to spend more time trying to recreate the context instead of taking an hour, you know, Monday when you're waiting for the other paper to get, you know, fix get the one that you just got back make the corrections to it so that you don't have to correct seven weeks of work in one week and then put that together in perfect format with a powerpoint and a video that's going to kill you okay in week 10 all right and so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep reminding you of this um because I haven't had many failures on this, but there were a couple of people who just got completely burned out and fried because it was, you know, they had too many, you know, plates in the air at the same time. So find a work schedule that you can dedicate and the activities that you're going to do every week for this thing. Otherwise, you know, if you say, wow, you know, I don't have to, I just got to throw this thing together each week. And then I'll put them all together at the last minute. No, you won't. Okay. You, you've got this golden template that you keep adding stuff that is as perfect in format as possible. You know, the page numbers are the same. The fonts are the same. The, you know, all that stuff is the same. So you don't have to sit there and play with tables and, oh, my God, it's the wrong font. And it's Times and it's Arial and it's Calibri. And, ah, you'll go crazy. Okay. so. Um, all I, all I, all I will say, this is one of Professor Bauer's famous sayings. Some of you are bound to ignore this and substitute your judgment for my guidance. Um, you are free, okay, to make your own decisions. On the other hand, I've done this assignment about five times and I've, I've had really some really heartbreaking things you know, on Sunday afternoon, trying to patch something together. Um, for somebody and you just run out of time. And 
what what happens is I only have a certain amount of time at the end of the term to get the grades in. And that's where it starts to hurt. So, um, and you know, when people say, I hate to tell you so, they lie. In, in my experience, when someone tells me they hate to tell me so, the next thing they say is what they want to tell me. You know, what they said they hate to tell me. Why don't you just shut up and not tell me? No, they love to tell you so. They want to rub it in. I told you so, you know, and I'm not going to be that way much. But I, I this is one of these things that the only time it's really bitten people has been when they're not fixing things as they get them back, but kind of waiting to the very end. All right. So, you know, that's that's kind of that's really all I'm trying to say there. Um, all right. Questions on the major portfolio assignment of this uh, development process here, the, the you know, seven or eight weeks that we're, we're working on this. Clear as mud. Uh, I, Professor, are you going to give us a template? No, no, you gotta make it up. No, of course not. Um, there are, starting with this week's assignment, you'll see word uh, procurement template and you can download it. It's on just about every module going forward. I think there's, you know, like the sustainability one, the doc, the template isn't there. Um, if you can't find it, I'll, I'll mail it in the email. You know what? I'm gonna be making a couple of things. I'll, I'll, I'll send it just so everyone has it. It's the same document everywhere. As soon as you download it, then, you know, put it in a folder, and then put, you know, you know, week three, week four, week five, week six, just so that, you know, when you save it, the second week, now you have two parts. And the third week, now you have three. And, and it takes shape. And when you, when you submit it to me, it could, on week seven, it could have, you know, it'll have seven parts. I'll only grade the seventh part because I've already done all the other ones in the previous six weeks. Okay, does that make sense? So, so you're, not, you're not doing seven papers and then the last week you're cut and pasting and you know, no, you just, you add, we're gonna do page three. We're gonna go over to page five. We're gonna go to page seven and, and then we're gonna come back to page two and page four and, and you'll see this thing take shape and be fully done, you know, by the end of the, by the end of the assignment. Does that, does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm glad you have, up. I'm glad you, you, you just need a little faith. It seems, um, it seems a little crazy, but yeah, there's definitely, I was just being sarcastic about the, uh, you know, I, I've waited in long lines all day with medical people. So I just feel like <laughs> yelling at someone. So pardon, pardon me if I, I took my smart ass pills this morning. But um, yeah, no, the, 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 the word template is definitely there. In fact, um, yeah, um, can you... Uh, let me share my screen. All right, can you see this? Yeah. Sample. Okay, so this this is like the fourth time I've downloaded this. Okay, and if you look, you can see the word outline view on the left side. Can you see where it says navigation? Yep. Yeah, so you go down there, you'll see section two, here are the actions, section three, section four, section five. So there's, you know, five major sections. And, and, and so you see them in here, it's your project charter. This is where Lewis Tully, I would be honored if Lewis Tully got a job somewhere in here. Legal, make him a accounting officer, you know, information security officer, you know, anyway. So here's the vision and it's a template. So you're gonna be poking stuff in here. And as long as you don't mess this up, you know, project name, 
W what's your project name? Put that in the header. Don't ever change it. It's done. Version number, revision date. You can use this week three, week, you know, and then, you know, you're just to keep track of your stuff. All right. And so you're going to walk through this and you see as I'm going through, you know, for um, for roles and, and definition, the RACI charting, you know, responsible, accountable, consulted, informed, et cetera. And the, again, these are the people that you, you know, use your wife, use your, you know, little daughter, you know, whatever. Don't, you know, just don't give a real email address or con contact information or whatever. So you're going to be filling these out. Um, and so they're, they're available, like I said, on just about every one of the modules. So I, I think you should be, I think you should be fine in, uh, in, in that regard. Um, all right. So let me, um, let me. And so for each one of these, when we fill that out in the template, we need an additional like executive briefing to explain what we did in that template. Right. Um, no, no, not necessarily. Some are just fill this out. Others are fill it out and then summarize it in a document. And so there are slight uh, modifications. Take these three areas and give me a one pager on what your overall vision is for the product. That's where that's where I take the assignment page each week and I'm going to do it in two slides and I break it down to here are the deliverables. Okay, don't skip this. And this is what you need. Now, you have to write this, but don't include it. You know, you, you have to write this in, you know, in the template, but just include a summary form and, and turn in the summary. So don't get faked out. And, and I, will, I will endeavor to make sure if there's any ambiguity to be really clear on that. But that, that's a really good question. I, I said before, you're not going to be working on the major portfolio assignment the rest of the term. It'll be probably 85% of your work. And we want to make sure that we get the other 15 done in a way that's efficient and, you know, not going to, you know, everyone gets it done and, and, you know, but we keep our eyes on the big prize. Okay. All right. Um, let's, let's move to, um, this week's assignment. Okay. Um, you're supposed to be able to start the comprehensive procurement plan. You're supposed to understand agile and traditional procurement projects, and you are going to create a procurement comms plan, identifying stakeholders and omni-channel, multiple channel approaches, okay? Now, part one is what we're gonna be working on for the next seven weeks, okay? So you're not gonna finish that, you know, this week. The compare and contrast is just to understand things. And hopefully we covered that tonight. What is gonna be the deliverable you focus on is this procurement comms plan which will be parked in the template, okay? There's a uh, project management book of forms that uh, the assignment will refer to. It'll say you can use the template or you can use the, the PMBOK book of forms. The book of forms is, is pretty interesting, but you, you, you have to find the software version of the form and then you end up with six or seven different forms and the, and the fonts are off. And, uh, you know, I, I would, you know, um, at Facebook, somebody told me, um, you know, I was working in their data center from some, S, some software defined networking stuff. And the guy said, perfect is the enemy of good enough. And they really mean that. Um, 
from a from a technology standpoint does this router work does do we get the throughput on this switch you know what we could spend three hours programming all these routes and maybe getting an additional two percent throughput but it's not worth the time we we got other things to do so i would recommend the template over the forms i i really think it's almost a distractor to put those in there but if you want to look at them you're not constrained to do it this way but boy i would strongly recommend using the uh using the template all right so here's the instructions for this week after reviewing this week craft the procurement communications plan this was for this part three thing here right um you may use the ict 4105 procurement plan template or you can refer to the course text for downloadable, you can customize and whatever. I really, you know, I far be it from me to interfere with your freedom, but I would strongly recommend just use the word template. No one, no one ever got flunked using the word template. Okay. And uh, now within, and this was a question earlier, within each of the five categories, we're only doing one part of one category today or this week, it's acceptable to add or sub subtract any element of the template given your project management approach. Maybe you wanna do this PMP by the book. It's a procurement project, all of our ops, all of our product management, all of our manufacturing, whatever is all done via PMP, then stick to PMP, don't, it's not the time to invent a lot of new fan, you know, fancy stuff or, or, or whatever that is not going to be authentic to what you're doing, okay? Um, the project manager book of forms contains other templates, you know, by all means, get the digital version so you're not looking at paper, you know, that way you can modify it and everything like that. Um, we have that on closed reserve in the uh, in the library, um, in the ICT library, so you could pick that up. At this stage, this is really important. You need not know the message itself since your project is not yet defined. I mean, you have an idea what we're going to do, but it's not, you know, we haven't put all the piece parts together. Focus on the stakeholders and the channels. Who does the project manager communicate to above and below? So you got a project charter and a recce chart. There's the template. Okay. Remember, I, and I, I, you know, I put this in yellow. The form doesn't change each week. Okay. Um, so you don't download a new form each week. You add stuff to the original form. What channels? How are you going to communicate? Um, 24 hours or less email, weekly meetings. I mean, you have the freedom. Stakeholders meeting, this, 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 and this. Okay. And whoops, I got. Hang on just a second. Let me move this thing out of the way. Um, summarize your assignment in a Word document as if you were including the document in the Portfolio Assignment Procurement Plan. You want to do all the, the recce charts and all that kind of stuff? Fine. Send that, send the template to me but summarize it all in a word doc. And by summarize, I mean a couple of paragraphs, okay? You, you'll get the whole comms plan information in this week's reading assignments, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. So what, what I try to do is, this is straight from the Canvas pages. And I, I look at anything that is, a do step and I highlight it in yellow, right? And hopefully when you get through with this, you look at what you have and you say, okay, I've used the ICT procurement plan. I filled that part out. I take that information and I'm summarizing it as a Word document. You know, um, you can, you can um, send me both or just send me the Word doc, but for goodness sake, do 
the front part, you know, the project charter, uh, the communication role, and the project charter and the rec chart. Okay, don't wait till the end of them uh, to start filling out the template. Okay, um, let's see what we have on the next page here before I take some questions. Yeah, okay, so this is the rubric. You understand the topic, you structure the assignment in a logical manner. If you structure the assignment by doing these things in this order, you're gonna be in great shape. Um, make sure you use your template. A lot of you use the same template that I sent around. No problems with format, you know, um, you're gonna do fine. Uh, it's not worth a lot, but you know, the five points a week uh, can add up after a while. Okay, questions on this week's assignment. Yeah. Uh... I, I kind of have a question on the general uh, structure of, of how we are going to proceed into the assignments. Uh, okay. So I can see, I, I can see that we're basically trying to uh, to do different pieces in in different weeks and then come up with a whole document at the end of the the uh, the term. So which is good, I guess. And uh, well, it's like a, it's a little, you know, it's a little strange. You know, yeah, and, and yeah. it's not the way you would build a house. Yeah. You know, and, and for those of you who are used to doing, you know, thing A, thing B, thing, and then when you're yeah. at thing Z, you're all done. It will be a little, you know, go forward, back up, go forward, back up. But when you're is, is all done, like, yeah. Yeah. Is there like a specific reason why it's done like that? Like any concept behind it? for it to be like that? I wish I knew. <laughs> um, all I can say is when I redesigned the, um, the, the network, the uh, enterprise architect class 4010, I just said, you know what? Let's do this iteratively. What, why are we whipsawing back and forth? Um, you know, they added cloud. You know, this is a global merger. And on week 10, when they're supposed to put it all together, they said, oh, let's put everything in the cloud. You know, like, really? Are you nuts? They had data centers all over the world. They had regulatory compliance. They expanded to uh, uh, Australia, to um, People's Republic of China, to India, to the EU. And, and it was just like, it, it was like, uh, some kind of nervous system attack, you know, or tremors and all this, it was crazy. And, and someone said, well, that's the way businesses work. And I said, you know, I've been in some businesses like that. That's not people's goal. Planning didn't be realistic or situations changed, but you don't plan to go cloud the last week of your project, okay? You've gotten those requirements, hopefully months before you've done all this stuff. And so um, I would hope the next time this gets modified, why can't we start with one and go through five, you know, and, and then just move the content chapters that deal with those things to those sequences. There's nothing, to, I, I like it when things are simple. You know, because life is complex enough without trying to add, you know, complexity to it. Um, what is it? Um, there was a 14th century uh, monk named Lord Occam, and he constructed a logical principle called Occam's Razor. And it goes, all things being equal. The simpler explanation for the process is the preferable. And when you're trying to figure out an unknown, instead of saying, oh, it could have been a meteorite, well, you know, maybe you dropped your coffee. You know, it's something that's a little easier to understand. And so I, I try to approach project management, and this is a project in, in many ways, that with that same approach. Let's keep it simple. It's complex enough as it is. There are a lot of moving parts, just getting them together. Um, but you don't put 
the transmission in the car as it's going down the assembly line first. Okay. I mean, I don't know exactly what the order is or whatever, but you don't do that. You know, um, if it's an electric, you got to put the battery first and you got, you know, however you build up the chassis and whatever, but every project has its feel and structure that way. And so, you know, however you guys build whatever you want to do, then, you know, I, I think spend some time this week. Am I really sure what I want to do? Can I create a reasonable facsimile of some of these things in the weeks to come? If not, we'll find a simpler project, okay? We, we have a new, you know, um, apparel line coming out, or we have a new wiring project for this data center, or we have a new, you know, uh, a product extension on this particular project. Don't make it the Normandy landings, you know, uh, or something that's, you know, just overly complex, because you'll get so bogged down in the details. It's a fake project. No, no one's got to operationalize it. No one's got to sign off on it, whatever. If it resembles the way your company does business and you want to stay there and, and work there longer, then, yeah, write something similar so you can tell your boss and I can tell your boss, you know, yeah, this was a project that resembled without giving away any, you know, protective IP that resembles what, you know, what you guys do and tries to organize it in a, in a way that uh, reflects the best standards in procurement. So does that help, Abraham? Okay. Other questions? Austin, you look like you're completely, <laughs> you hit your limit of a few a few drinks ago, huh? <laughs> been a long day. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I, I'm just, you know. By the way, Austin got me, just so you guys all know, Austin got me all straightened up on the schedule here. And, uh, you know, I owe you an apology for thinking that you were, you were in left field. I was in, like, the Milky Way somewhere in the asteroid belt or something. But, but anyway, no yeah, all, all good. We work together. All right. Um, Warren, can you can you play us out um, with kind of a closing song? Um, <laughs> chopsticks or, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kidding. So um, any other questions, guys? Uh, you got to you got to plug your your microphone into the to the piano, but no, no pressure. You'll do that. It's all for wrong. The, the project kickoff will have a theme song right <sighs> anyway <laughs> i've had projects where someone got a theme song and i'm like god what are, what are we doing here i want to go home anyway speaking of going home it's 7 30 um if you think of any other questions um please shoot them to me i'll share them with the group if they have a a context uh important for everybody um i'll have this saved um, the deck will really help you in terms of the, the overall sequencing and especially this week. And like I said, I'll do it every, every week. So nobody gets whipsawed at the end. Okay. All right, guys, have a great week. And I hope your NFL team wins. If you follow the NFL, some of them will, and an equal number will not. And that's, that's what I'm betting on. Okay. <laughs> We'll talk to y'all later. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Have a good night. Bye, good night. Bro. Take care.